today's video, I'm going to teach you how to read the defense in Madden NFL 20. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. My YouTube channel basically focuses on how can I help you get better at Madden NFL 20 and also Madden 21 when it comes out. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be talking about how can you read the defense better in Madden 20 and some kind of key things that I think are really what's important to look for. So I'm going to kind of label this the top five tips or top five things to reading the defense in Madden 20. So this is why I like the spread so much because I think that the spread forces that it, it allows you to really have a nice spread view of what is going on with the defense. So um, I'm just going to use air. I'm in Tampa Bay playbook and I'm just going to use a simple, um, a simple play here called Zona or Bucks Post Trail. This is an oldie but goodie. This is a really good one from Madden. I think 13 was when I was running this um, last. But anyway, and then defensively, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out in uh, any old basic. Let's see if I can find. Um, we're going to use nickel 335 wide. And I'm going to set up my audibles here. So I'm just going to come out in a cover four. And I can come into this. Um, the Sam will blitz. It's going to show some different things, but the first thing you want to look for is when they come out there before, like as soon as the play is snapped. So the first tip is the first question you're going to ask is, are they base aligned or not? Are they base aligned or not? Now here's how you can tell in a spread set. If they're base aligned, you see that they're going to be in a different in a different positioning as if they're man aligned. So if they're base aligned, you see they're in a different position. And then if they're not base aligned, you see they're in a completely different position. Now, one easy way to tell is if you look at the corners, the corner on the the corner on the wide side of the field will be a little bit to the inside of the wide receiver on the wide side of the field from a spread. So you see Rhodes here. See how he's the, see how he's where he is. Now if I unbase align, you see he's going to be wide. As soon as I baseline, watch him. He moves inside. That's a quick tell that they're in a base align defense. So are they base aligned or are they not base aligned? If the answer is yes, they're base aligned. One of the basic principles to beating baseline defenses this year is to throw a simple um you see what's going to happen is you're going to now have that wide side of the field so you can throw uh let me just say here let's go to four verticals from trips so you would want to motion into a trip set because now you've got more receivers on one side of the field than he has defensive backs it's a basically a numbers game and at the snap of the ball you can throw these fade routes now again i'm, I'm just forcing it but there are some there are some routes that you can run because of this. So if they're base aligning their defense, let me just say they're base aligning their defense. One of the things that that's going to do, one of the things that's going to do, is it's going to leave them vulnerable to quick, quick out routes, quick flat routes. So curl flats. This is why this play exists. This is why this play exists, and he defends it there. But Typically, you'll have something. So the first thing that I like to ask is, are they baseline or are they not baseline? Because if they are baselining their defense, there are tricks and and stuff and ways to attack that. Um, and if you want to know those ways, what I want to encourage you to do is join my Discord because what I have, what I'm going to be doing is once we get to a hundred members in our Discord server. I am going to be releasing a free offense and free defense that's going to tell you and teach you exactly the setups for how to deal with some of that, some of those issues. But the real question you're asking is, are they baseline or not? Because if they're base aligned, it changes everything, right? If they're not base aligned, then number one, what's going to happen is, um, if they're not base aligned, they can't be in specific defenses, Right, it's going to limit if they're not baseline. It's going to limit where the pressure can come from. If they are baseline, then the pressure could come from wherever. But if they're not baseline, it's going to limit where pressure can come from, which is going to inform your pass protection. So that's the first question I ask. The second question I ask 
is are the corners are the corners pressed or are they backed off? Because if they're pressed, let me give you an example. If I go to cover two, you see that's press. That's Tampa two. Tampa two, they're backed off. But if I go audible to cover two man, you see they press up like that. So are they pressed or are they not pressed? If they're pressed, then what that means I need to be be aware of or be thinking of is what they're showing me that they're doing is they're showing me that they are in some type of two safety high, like a cover two or a Tampa two style of defense. The reason that that is significant is it typically means it typically means that the outside outside receivers are going to be very difficult. You're going to want to attack the middle of the field. So in this example, I might want to hit this route right here to, to Moore. Okay. Next question that I ask is, are the corners looking at the quarterback or are they looking at the wide receivers? So I'm in zone right now. And so if you look at the players, if you look at the, the way the helmets are facing on the, on the corner here, you can probably see it best over here on the right side. Trey, Rains, Trey Waynes is looking at Russell Wilson. That means he's in a zone. Because if he's in a man, watch what happens. If he's in cover two man, look at the corner now. Look at the corner now. Now he's looking at the wide receiver. Alexander is looking at the wide receiver. This guy's looking at the quarterback. I don't really know why. <laughs> But you'll see if I if I do any if I base the line or do anything. Now, if I audible to a let's say I put the corner on a zone. You see how he doesn't change? So that's a that's a little bit of a tell too, and that's something you gotta watch out for. But if they base the line or they change anything, then you see he changes. You see there's the tell. So if the wide receiver, if the corner is looking at the quarterback, more than likely it's a zone. It might not be, but more than likely it's a zone. Especially if they put him in a zone and then they unbase line or rebase line, or or maybe they do, maybe they do something like they come out and cover. They come out and cover four, and then they set up their blitz, something like this, right? And they change the whole defense, and then they baseline it. Right, that's that. Those are all tells. Those are all little things. So, who are the corners looking at? That's going to tell you at least the base coverage that they're going to work from. The base coverage that they're going to work from, whether that's cover two, cover three, cover four, whatever it might be. So, that's a critical critical question to ask. So, so far, are they base aligned or are they not base aligned? Okay, are they? Um, who are the corners looking at? Okay. And then where are the corners standing at? Are they pressed up or are they backed off? The next question I ask when I'm reading the defense pre-snap is where can they blitz me from? Where can they blitz me from? Because more than likely, they're not going to blitz this corner. Well, they might, but more than likely, they're not. More than likely, what they're going to do, right, because I know how defense is played, is they're going to do something like this. They're going to set up these threats. So I can blitz these guys right here just like this. So in this scenario, they have a potential of six people that they can send pressure with. Seven, I guess, if you count the middle linebacker. The safeties, by the time the safeties get in on the quarterback, I should have plenty of time. So the hot blitz is going to come from one way or the other. So what that tells me then is more than likely, more than likely, these guys right here are are threats to the blitz, which means I've got to figure out how I'm going to bat, block that. How I'm going to block that. That's another step to my pre-snap read and reading the defense ritual. Where can they blitz me from? How can I pick it up? And what I like to do is um, I do a lot of labbing on on um, YouTube, what I'll do is I'll go to YouTube and I'll go through every formation in Madden, literally every formation in Madden. I'll say dime two three six blitz, 
Dime 146 Blitz, 3 4 Bear Blitz, 3 4 Odd Blitz, 4 3 Wide 9 Blitz, 4 6 Bear Blitz, every formation. And I will see if anyone has found pressure from those packages. And then I will also lab those packages myself and see if I can find pressure from them or find good blitzes. And then I will work on picking them up. That's the lab work that I put into pass protection because it's so, so, so important, right? It's so important. It's it's basically film study. It's basically film study. That's that's one of the things that I think most people don't do. They watch Madden, but they don't study Madden. And I think there's a big difference. So if you really want to get better at your pass protection, you're going to have to study some of these blitzes and ask the question, why does this blitz work or why does it not work? So I like to ask when I'm pre-snap, who, where can they get me with the blitz? Where can they get me with the blitz? Okay. And then the last question that I ask pre-snap is, where is their user? Because normally they're going to tell you. They may, may, they may move this guy down, move this guy down, move this guy here. But if you see something like this, they can't click off of that. You see that? They can't click off of that. So they got a user, someone here, and more than likely what they're going to do is if they're, I mean, this is the setups, right? I mean, they're going to user him to kind of occupy a lineman on one side or the other. And they're going to let the safeties go back. So what that tells me is at the snap of the ball, literally all of this information that I've been given is where is that user likely going to be? More than likely, he is going to be in the hooks on the side that he's in. So if he's on this side of the field, he's going to drop back this way. If he's on this side of the field, he's probably going to drop back this way, and then he's coming around. That's the basic, basically what they do. Now, what could he do? He could jump over here if he wanted to, but it's a really, really hard thing to do. So if I, if I see a hot blitz, like I'll just give you an example. So if they're going to blitz me, right, and I see a hot blitz, this is my favorite tactic for the blitz this year, by far. Favorite tactic by far. This is the meta, right? Send six, right? Well, what he's going to be able to do, I'm not kidding you. He can't get out. So so the linebacker can only cover so, someone. He, he can't cover everybody, right? So just to illustrate this, what I'm going to show you, just a quick, simple thing. If they blitz you off both edges, which they will, I promise, whichever side that linebacker goes, you're throwing the hitch to the opposite side. That's it. That's, all, that, that's how you beat the blitz. So thinking through, where is there, who, who are they using, what is he probably going to do with his user, anticipating that, and that's my, that are five, those are five ways that I read the defense. And if I do those five things every single play, what happens is my post-snap gets a thousand times better, because all I have to do is prove my hypothesis and say, oh, yep, he's in this zone, or he's this zone, he's this zone. That's a really simple way to improve your offense because I'm telling you um, as long as I've been playing Madden I've never ever 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 seen someone that's lost a game of Madden because receivers weren't getting open I have seen people lose game after lose game after lose game of Madden because they are missing wide open receivers and the reason that they're missing wide open receivers the reason that I miss wide open receivers is typically because either one I don't know my setups enough I don't know my plays enough or two, I'm not reading the defense well. Those are the two things. And so that's why I try to keep my playbook simple. That's why I try to stay in the same playbook all year. That's why I try to lab every single defense that I can possibly lab against it. Because it f helps me get so much better. Um, it's all about execution. So those are my top five tips, top five ways to read the defense. Love to hear what you think of these in the comments. And I just really want to encourage you, if you're looking to take your Madden game to the next level, I really believe our Discord server is going to be able to help you do that. When you join our Discord, you'll be able to ask questions, not just to me, but to everybody from our channel. And we can all jump in and make each other better. I believe in it so much that once we get 100 people in that Discord, we're going to drop a free offer.